turn on the torch, light up the flame. Time to melt some glass, my friends. Got a couple of things that I was going to work on today. Well, actually one in particular. A request was made, and with that, I am going to do, without further ado, well, a question was asked, or, or a, a request was asked uh, to show the gap a little better on my bloom shroom. And I told them I haven't done one in high def, so why not let me uh, just show you a bloom shroom in high def. And I'm actually going to do the stem a little bit too because it looks like every one of the ones that I'm trying to grab that already encased is not encased enough or just doesn't look right. So, um, this right here, I've already layered one layer of clear over it. I'm going to do about two more layers with that. And then we're going to make a mushroom stem out of that. And then that's going to be like one or two of them. It isn't going to be that a whole big one right there. So we're going to go from there, okay? Okay, we got to warm it in a little bit because of course this is the way I do things is I leave it this is straight off the bench cold. Okay. There we go. I'm going to layer and continue layering at least twice I think. Make it easier for it all. You don't need much. It's a good stem. Any color, solid color that you want to make for the stem is, is good. I mean, you don't have to. But it, this is the way I do the stem, actually, is I layer it, encase it, and then you've got a nice, clear, heavy-duty clear coat over a solid color. Basically, that's the way it works. Okay. The way I'm doing this, it actually does tend to, um, the way I layer the, the, line, the lines of clear over it, it may cause a air line going in, but the way I've opened it up at the end down here, on this side, it basically uh, lets the air out and down the shaft to the other end. Yes, you should get an occasional air line or air bubble, but this alle alleviates a lot of them. The way I sort of pull out, like I do right there at the very end with all these bumps. Okay, I'm stretching this a little bit, and then I'm going to turn around and do one more layer. See how much longer it is? And it's about the same thickness it was a minute ago. It's just, I mean, the thickness before I added the first layer, the new layer of clear. Here we go again. And because it's longer, should be able to get a little bit even more than just two out of this one, okay? Again, you, you're heating up the rod that you're adding to the color. You're not adding or heating up this one over here. You're heating up this one and layering it on. See that? And I'm also sort of turning it too. I'm just, I'm not sort of just, I guess I need to put a line or a dot on there so you can see me actually 
sort of turn spinning it as I heat it. It's a it's a muscle memory to me now. I don't even think about it. I just do it. But that's the case of what's going on. I heat and turn, and you can see it roll and turn at the same time. I, 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 I just the way I'm doing it. Okay, there you go. Now that's a nice thick encasement going on. And now I'm going to heat up and stretch it just a little bit more. And this is how you do the encasement. And again, there is usually an airline going on, but if you do what I've done, most of the air sort of works its way out. It's sort of like a non back stack stack. Oh, actually, I'm talking about that, and I just produced one air bubble, airline there, or air bubble, as it were. But the rest of them, they work their way down. It's getting there. And you can see, the thing about as you encase something in glass, it becomes or, or looks a lot bigger than it actually is. The glass magnifies the actual um, thickness, figure, size, whatever's inside the glass. It's deceiving. It's not as big as it actually is. I'll tell you that right now. But it looks good. What I've done, everything but that one bubble came out. Nice and clear. Now, here we go for the mushroom. Let me get some uh, wire cutters. Of course it's not wire cutters, but it'll do the trick. So squeezing it a little bit where I'm going to cut it off. And that break is basically going to be the top of the mushroom. Okay? Where the top of the mushroom starts, excuse me. Let's see. Green mushroom, white mushroom, pink mushroom, pink mushroom. And we'll put some blue dots on it. It's got a nice red or lava or orange color stem anyway, so that's part of the the color scheme, I guess, going on. There we go. That should be that. I'm going to pull it out a little bit here, stretch it out into a conical or cone shape. There we go. Roll it around a little bit. I said I was going to add blue, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to add some blue dots to this mushroom. And of course, they look like long, thin, but as I heat and melt it in, you'll see what goes on. And here it goes. It draws right in there. need an excuse to come out here and work. I've really been in a slump lately. I'm sorry to all my audience out there. I haven't even... I need to do a um, couple of things. One of them is the 500 subscribers drawing, like I did at 400. And again, my goal is to try to get close to 1,000 before the end of the year. 1,000 subscribers. Not... You know, I'm not trying to overdo it. I'm not trying to underdo it. Okay. Now, with this, this is where he wanted, he wasn't sure of what was going on with the gap. Okay, you, you'll 
see a line, and I'll, I'll make it more prevalent, maybe, where the pink glass ends. And what you do is layer clear almost to where the pink glass ends. And that's the gap that I talk about in the first video. Okay? And I will put a um, link to the, uh, to the first bloom shroom and Versa Vicia. I'll also put a link to this bloom shroom saying more high depth if you're interested in watching it. Okay, now you're basically encasing it again, just like you did before, but you're leaving that little bit of a gap. And all of this will round into itself and become a round ball, or if you wanted to, it could become more of a, a um, pill shape, I guess you could say. Elongated. Okay. Right now, I'm only using my five liter per minute concentrator. I didn't, I didn't feel like I needed to turn on both of them at once. Now, here we go. You go and make a gap, like I said, between the two of them, the top stem and the bottom. I mean the top of the mushroom and the bottom stem. And what's gonna happen is that the surface tension in the glass will make it elongate the gap or where it sort of bumps in like that once the glass melts it all finds its own level and and becomes one one surface one size that's all I guess you could say okay here we go I'm gonna leave that this is the gap that I'm talking about. And I guess I should have used a different color so you could actually see the white or the clear of the, of the shroom itself. I mean the pink part of the mushroom. Anyway, here we go. And it's sort of collapsing in and also as, like I say, what's going on is the edge of this mushroom is going to bloom outward with what I'm doing here. As it sort of stretches and becomes all one surface and finds its level, it's pulling the rim of the mushroom out to the outer rim and the outer thickness of the tubing which gives you a nice bloom shroom instead of that rounded down under type shroom that everybody likes to do of course that's easy too all you got to do is push it in a piece of glass this is a little bit more common McClated. not much but it gets the job done okay that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Okay. I'm going to just put a loop on the top, a bale, whatever you want to call it. Learning to feed the glass. You're heating it up in one place and sort of pulling and drawing it out from another. Drawing from that glass you just heated up. There we go. Oops, got a little bit warm stuck to it, but that's okay. Now I'm going to uh, flare out this loop, bale, or whatever you want to call it with a uh, with the actual uh, graphite rod it sort of rings out the area a little bit now 
fun part, tricky part, whatever you want to part it about the part. These are basic wire cutters and right to the base of where this mushroom ends I'm going to heat up and put those wire cutters at that spot like so. And nip it off. There we go. Drop that. Of course, when you want a rod uh, or a punte to put it on, and I'm going to do sort of like a cold weld up here at the top and fire polish down here at the bottom. Round it right on in. There is an air line down here at the bottom base of this mushroom, but now that I'm down here, I'll make it into a nice little round bubble will work to my advantage. A bit of an airline, which they tend to crack and pop out. But the bubble shows it evenly melted in. Almost there. Rounding over. And there we are. Okay. And tap it off. Fire polish. Right now you got one hot bloom shroom. Okay. You know how long that's been going on. Okay. Didn't finish off. Oh, it's still recording. Good. So let me pull it up with tweezers. Almost looks like it's just floating. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. And as always, two things, carpe vitro, and enjoy your day.